I'm Keith Barry. I can detect lies, read or implant thoughts, and influence behavior. Sleeping all the way down, relaxing every single muscle of your body. This is not happening. Did you know your mind can be hacked like a computer? Try not to let me get inside your head. How could he get inside someone's head? Weird. Your thoughts controlled or even wiped. The guy took my mind away. Your body gives away clues. The way you breathe, your pulse, your eyes. I didn't know my account number. You become transparent and can't be manipulated. It's freaking impossible. I understand and use these signals to get inside your head. How did you know that? Is it science or is it deception? Sixty to seventy percent of all communication is derived from nonverbal behavior. When we're anxious or stressed, the physical signs of what we're feeling become even more visible. I'm here on Hollywood Boulevard. I'm about to stop people at an ATM machine to try and experiment with their stress levels, their bank card, and their PIN number. Excuse me, can, I, can you help me out with something? No? Come on, just two seconds, two minutes, two minutes. You sure? Can I stop you for a second? Have you got time? Yeah. Two minutes? Hey man, can I stop you two seconds? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right, great. Uh, I'm gonna try something right now at an ATM machine. Do you, do you have your bank card with you, your ATM card with you? Yeah. All right, can you take it out for a second? All right, I don't want to touch that at all. How many people besides you know your PIN number? Uh, just me. Just you? Yeah. Have you ever told anybody your PIN number? Told anyone? Yeah. Not that I remember, no. All right, and when's the last time you used an ATM machine? Oh, uh, yesterday. Right, but you're happy there's no way I could know your PIN number, right? Right. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try a little experiment right now on stress levels. If I could tell you what your PIN number was right now, would that stress you out? Yeah. All right, just put your card in the machine. Okay, I'm just gonna take you by the wrist for a second, if that's okay. Uh, let's hit English there. Okay, it says, please enter your PIN number. Focus on the first digit, whatever the first digit is. You just told me. You just don't know how you told me. It was a one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay, focus on the second digit. The second digit, you're actually telling me now. You just don't know how you're telling me. Nine? Yeah. Focus on the third, the third digit. Try, try to shut me down. Another nine. You son of a uh. I'm not too sure. It's either five or six. Don't say it. Just think it. Six. Okay, I'm inside. I'm inside your your account right now. I'm inside your account. Focus on focus on an amount that you want to take out. Focus on an amount. <laughs> um. I'm gonna try and take out an amount right now. Are you okay with me taking cash no, out here? No, 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 actually, that's, no. <laughs> You're no, seriously no, not okay no, with this? No, that's not okay. How, how the How do you know my, how do you know my account number? I saw it. No, seriously, how do you know my account number? How do you, how do you know that? Huh? You told me. You just don't know how you told me. No, I didn't tell you my number. You told me. You spoke. I'm not, I'm not, I'm being serious, bro. How did you know that? spoke without speaking. That's what I do. Who is that guy? Hang on. Hang on. Who is that guy? For the series? Okay, I know, but who is that guy? How does he know my account number? Imagination directly influences body movement, and depending on how you ask the subject questions and how you measure the signals, they can give a reflection of the thought process underneath it. Just tell me exactly what happened just now. I okay, I was walking down the street. Hello there, Harry. Can I stop Hello. you for a second? Sure. I'm going to try something in a moment with your bank card. Yeah. And some guy said that he might know my account number. Put your card in the machine. Now? Yeah, yeah, right now. Put it in. I want you to focus on the first digit, just the first digit of your PIN number. So you told him what your PIN number was? No, I didn't tell him. He said to think of your PIN number. Try not to let me get inside your head. Who can you, how can you get in someone's head? Four. Was it a four? And you're getting a little bit stressed now, right? Right. I'm serious, dude. That's 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 not cool. He guessed the exact numbers, the exact four digits of my number. Six. I'm now in your bank account. 
How does that make you feel? Scary. That makes you feel kind of weird right L now, right? A little bit. And you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to my bank right now, and I'm going to change my PIN number. Hacking the mind at a bank account is unnerving for most people. Let's try something completely different. The average person has about 20,000 words in their vocabulary. I'm only interested in one of them. Hi there, thanks for stopping. What's your name? Mark. Mark, I'm gonna try a little experiment with you right now with words, okay? okay. I've got a card here. I'm gonna flash this card to you very, very quickly. It's got some words written on it. These words are gonna enter your subconscious mind, but not your conscious mind. So visualize the space between us right here. Really focus on that space. Good, and did you see any of those words? No. No? Just name a word out loud now. Apple. Apple. Yes. Would you be amazed if one of these words was the word apple? Yeah. Totally. You would? Yeah. Do you see it there? Oh my god. Name the first letter of each word out loud. A P P L E. Apple. That's for you, man. But I didn't even think I saw a single letter on that that thing. It flashed so fast, it was just a blur. When we see a, a flash of information. We do take in most of that information. We have various ways in which we handle it. People often recognize more than they realize that there's imprinting that goes on in the brain. So you can see things, but certainly not just on a, on a conscious level. And did you see any of those words? No. No? My subconscious mind must have seen the bolded letters. It just makes you think that, you know, you won't even realize that something like that will flash before your eyes, and yet it's still flashing through your mind. The average human visual field extends to approximately 60 degrees left and right from the center of the face. I'm going to try an experiment involving vision and the subconscious mind. Excuse me, can I stop you for a second? Yes. You all right with that? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to try something with your newspaper, if that's okay. All right. All right, can I borrow it? Let's see what we got here. Uh, we got lots of different photographs on the front of your newspaper. Uh, photograph of a, like a butterfly, some baseball players, and an airplane. I want you to take back the newspaper. Here's what I'd like you to do. Just turn all the way around, look at the front of the newspaper, and I want you to familiarize yourself with the front of the newspaper. Do that for me now. I'm gonna write something down while you do that. I don't want you to see what it is just yet. Good, I want you to turn back now. Face me, good. Perfect. Put out your right forefinger like this. Right forefinger, and just stare at your right forefinger for me. Close your left eye. This is important. Good. And stare at that right forefinger for three seconds. Two. One. Good. I want you to open up the front of the newspaper. Take your right forefinger and place it on a paragraph. Any paragraph of your choosing. Do that for me now. I want you to move your finger over and back, word for word, and go down line by line and stop on any word of your choosing. You stopped at a word, yeah? And you could have had any word? Yeah. What word have you got in mind now? Name it out loud. U.S. Airways. U.S. Airways. Did that feel like a completely free choice to you? Yeah. What if I told you it wasn't a free choice? What if I told you I controlled you to stop on U.S. Airways? How would that make you feel? I don't believe it. You don't believe no. me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, Okay, man. Whoa, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. He stopped me on the street and asked me to pick an article. I'd like to try something with your newspaper, if that's okay. He told me to pick a word. As you become more aware of your surroundings, your brain picks up things that are going on around you. Place your right finger out and just stare at your finger, watch your finger, close your left eye for me, close your left eye, and stare at that finger for three <laughs> seconds. Through peripheral vision, we take in a lot of information about people and our surroundings. I didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing. So how did he do that? Pre-conscious processing is the processing of information in our subconscious mind or interior mind before it has even consciously registered. And this happens through peripheral vision. There's lots of different words there. You could have chosen any other word, correct? <laughs> yeah. Did that feel like a free choice to you, Ollie? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I 
didn't show him anything. I, he didn't know what word I, I he didn't know. How did he know? Amazing. <laughs> Seriously, man, how do you do that, man? Oh, man. It was anybody here know what ESP is? Hands up if you know what ESP is. I visit a graduate psychology class. Think of a value now to see who can get inside my head. I've been invited today to meet a group of psychology students who want to see a live demonstration of my abilities. They're expecting to see some mind reading. I'm going to show them mind writing. Class, we have um, someone coming in today, Keith Berry. He's a mentalist from Ireland. Um, Keith. Hi, Professor. How are you? Hi, Keith. Thanks for having me here today. And uh, you guys pretty much have no idea why I'm here, correct? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you, does anybody here know what ESP is? ESP. Hands up if you know what ESP is. So, three or four of you do. What's your understanding of ESP? I know it's extrasensory perception, and it's the ability to uh, have some sort of uh, mind reading power. Right. And that's kind of the old terminology for ESP, because it's actually now known as what's called VIP. And it's not very important persons. It's called VIP for a very good reason. It's called VIP because it's visual influential persuasion is what it's now known as. And we're going to try a little experiment right here with you guys. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to visualize a card in your minds. But it's really important right now you put your hands in your laps, put your feet flat on the floor for me. Good. And I want you to imagine a TV screen between us. Make your minds completely blank. And when I snap my fingers, I want you to fill that screen full of color. Now, there's two colors associated with playing cards. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to visualize a playing card. So when I snap my fingers, fill the screen full of color, either red or black. Now, good. Now I'd like you to compress that screen down into a shape. This is the suit that appears on the card. Do that for me now. Good. And finally, we need to give the card a value. So there's uh, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, or king. Think of a value now. Good. When I clap my hands, if you got the card that I was thinking of, I want you to stand up. And the card I was thinking of was the three of diamonds. How amazing is it that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of you actually really did think of the three of diamonds. And here's the extra bit. The answer has been staring at you all along. Examine it. Why do you think so many people thought of that card? The majority of folks mm -hmm. thought about that card. I was thinking maybe the color red because we're imagining a blank TV screen and then blank TV screens are usually black. And they said, I think of a color and, you know, we're likely to switch over to something that, you know, I don't know, so maybe that's persuaded the red. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> diamond. Oh. Yeah, diamond. We didn't see that on a, on a conscious level at all. It's when completely car, subconscious, right? right? It's not only the things that we see that affect us so much, in fact, the things that we aren't aware that we see will often have more impact than the things we see. Keith may be forming a diamond with his hands, for example, as a way of suggesting a card suit. And there might be visual information available in the room that was presented to them that they're not consciously aware of, but that could guide their decision. Uh, do you mind, guys mind if I stop you for a second? Is that all right? Yeah. Let's see, you've got a watch on. What's your name? Lori. Lori, do you mind if I borrow that watch just for a moment? I'm going to set your watch to a very specific time. Let's see, I'll go for there. OK, put out your left hand for me, please. Put your fist all the way around the watch. I don't want you to see the time. Just allow that to relax down. Put out your right hand. Stare at your hand and sleep down now. Down, down, deep, deep down. And just relax every single muscle of your body. I want you to visualize in your mind a clock, a nod when you can see a clock. Good. And in your mind, I want you to see the hands of that clock spinning around and around and around and around. A nod when you can see them spinning. Good. And I slowly see those hands slowing down, slowing down, and stopping at a specific time. A nod when you've got a time in mind. 
Good. 2-1. Eyes open, wide awake. Good. Uh, do you feel okay? Yeah. Uh, felt